We have just reached the halfway mark in this, the 2022 PDGA Amateur Disc Golf World Championships. Moving on to the back nine of round three at the Princeton Country Club here in Southern Indiana. It's Grant Zellner and Jennifer Allen with special thanks to our friends at Ace Run Pro and Gatekeeper Media for bringing us this footage of this PDGA major. This course looked so beautiful, long, challenging golf course. I'm excited to see what the back nine brings us. Sharu started off with a super hot round, six down on the front nine. Yeah, so bogey we'll free thus far. Yeah, we'll see if she's able to carry that. This is hole number 10, par three, 327 feet. Very challenging hole given that that 327 feet is all downhill, which makes distance control a real challenge. You've got a mandatory there on the right. We just flew past it. And on the left, you've got uh, out of bounds into the woods. So not a lot of margin for error here as we start the back nine. I'm assuming that cart path right here along the right probably plays OB as well, Grant? No, in this case, the cart path is in bounds. Interesting with the Mando there. Mm -hmm. I guess the Mando sort of takes the place. Hmm of the cart path having to be a line of demarcation. All the players throwing off of tee pads on the cart path on a few holes here at the country club. Yeah, and they're having a little bit of difficulty with the height going downhill, but then those tree branches really come into play very quickly. Oh. And I can't tell if that made it around. Jordan, I don't see. believe she passed it. I believe she's short of it there. Cadence has much better height. She's going to be able to get a good skip down the hill and stops before the OB line there on the left. So Sharu now playing first. This is a really touchy upshot. Saw a lot of these upshots go awry. Sharu still with some work to do to save her par. Here's Morgan. Yeah, the the pars oh. have been very interesting to me. You know, some of these have been very challenging mm -hmm. pars where the others have been pretty soft. So I guess they're all working their way out. Looks like she was able to stop short of that Mando and puts that placement right next to the pole. Pins it. Cadence there with the soft layup. We'll just sort of have to take her medicine here at the 10th. Difficult downhill putt we talked about during the front nine that those down sloping putts are going to um, have the tendency to hyzer off early. So you either have to kind of change your angle on the release of your putter or aim a little bit more to the right side of the basket. A lot of people have strong opinions about playing disc golf courses that are set up on ball golf courses. Uh, you know, of note here at the country club, the disc golf course is a permanent part of the setup and they use a lot of what I guess you would call the negative space around the ball golf holes. Yeah. You um, really haven't really been able like to that. notice. Yeah. I haven't not too much of the ball golf course that really has came into play. When it does, the golf greens are out of bounds. The hazards are also playing entirely out of bounds. Check my notes on that and found that all of the sand traps are playing as out of bounds. And a few of the tee boxes are playing as out of bounds. Plastic Addicts is proud to sponsor the coverage of the 2022 PDGA Amateur World Championships. Use code 22AMWORLDS to get 10% off store-wide from now until the end of July. Orders over $70, ship free. Thanks for choosing Plastic Addicts. Hole number 11, 262 feet. This is a par three. Again, looks like we have quite a few elevation changes and the basket in a tricky placement. Yeah, a little bit similar to the last hole in that it plays downhill the basket though on this mound. Out of bounds up the left-hand side.
Jordan going with the hyzer has good place um, angle out there to the right side. That hyzer's right back in towards the basket. Yeah, in my opinion, this hole played really true to its distance as compared to some of the other holes here on the course. Not that the distance measurements were wrong, but just that the lay of the land, the wind, and all of the things factored in. This hole, you can stand up and throw what you feel comfortable with at 262 feet. Up and over the top for Shudru. Oh, Morgan nearly landing on the top, then nearly tumbling into the basket, but we'll have to settle for a par. Cadence with a good, strong putt, grabbing her first birdie on this back nine. Jordan squeaking that up and in. Yeah, Jennifer, would it, would it surprise in. you? Would it surprise you that this hole played a half stroke above par? A little bit. Uh, maybe just with the putting, putting over the basket or hitting and rolling a little bit. Yeah, but this those, one did seem pretty true to par, like you said. Yeah. Those, those birdies, though, picking up strokes on the field in a big way. Lots of bogeys and even a few double bogeys taken here at the 11th. So we see Morgan now back out to the lead. <laughs> if that would have fell in, I mean. <laughs> now we're to hole number 12. This is another par three, a little bit longer, 356 feet. Really challenging hole here. That cart path beyond and right uh, is out of bounds and you're playing from very near it from the jump here on the 12th. So uh, that alone tightens up this hole quite a bit. Players having to play out and around to the left or take on the challenge of the out of bounds and try to get a finish over to the left. Yeah, so much elevation change out here as well. It's, it's definitely been a very challenging long course. Good solid drive by Jordan just doesn't quite crest the hill. If you can crest that hill, your disc is going to trundle down to the basket. Yeah, Cadence needs that to just bounce over. Oh, very, very close there. Just another couple of feet, and that disc would have ended up inside the circle. Morgan gets this high and needs it to drop safely, and she does. Shrew doing what I mentioned before, taking on the yes. challenge of the OB. Working that cart path the whole way down. She showed us her distance in the front nine, and she continues just to really have a nice, strong drive. That's definitely going to make this whole play a lot easier for her. Rewarded for taking on the risk. Morgan up inside the circle. Now here is Jordan. Again, thick grass here, and sometimes that's difficult when some of the holes will give you a little bit more of a skip than others, so you end up laying those up shots a little bit shorter, expecting some ground play. Sure, so with this, an opportunity. Yeah, look at that distance off the tee. Boom. In for the lone birdie here on the lead card. One of only three birdies on the day here at the 12th. By the way, if you haven't been joining us for earlier coverage of this AM World Championship, you're not seeing double Morgan and Jordan, twins from Florida. And just to help you out today, Morgan is the one wearing the blue shirt. 
And I only messed that up one time during the front nine. <laughs> <laughs> now that I've brought it up, I virtually guaranteed you're going to mess it up again. I apologize for I'm that, Jen. Sh- I'm sure I will. <laughs> Cadence had a, a pole bounce out at the towards the end of that front nine. She mm-hmm. almost had another one. That one stays in for her par. Yeah, a lot of body language there, keeping that disc in the basket. Now Jordan needs to make this. She is able to save her bogey. A few rollaways um, this morning, and so hopefully they will stay close to the basket and the wind will stay nice and low for this the rest of the remainder of the back nine here. Hole number 13, another par three, a little bit shorter, only 312 feet. Yeah, but it forces an extensive carry because all of that rough that you're seeing there is playing out of bounds. So players not really rewarded for trying to play short. You don't want to end up on that golf green down there. That's out of bounds as well. Got to get up onto this. I can't even call it a plateau because it's still continuing to go uphill as you move further along. So a very challenging hole here as Shiru takes on the challenge first. And you can see right there just how long this hole plays. Yeah, and the wind is definitely blowing a little bit out there. I'm assuming that cart path is OB along the right as well. So it brings in a little bit more of a challenge. And here we have that interesting tee pad again that we had a, saw a little bit of slipping on. Cadence. Morgan and now Jordan all laying up to really the only place you can, which is here sort of short, although the one shot went probably further than Morgan yeah, wanted it to. Yeah, Sharu's had a little bit more distance on it, probably carrying down into that ditch. Good approach by Jordan. That's a weird layup. It's kind of an interesting hole. Yeah, and it's going uphill, and you can see the flag there, a crosswind. And so mm-hmm. that's... Maybe helping them out on this just a little bit. Jen, I don't know if you recall, but when the round started, that flag was blowing in a completely different direction. Yeah, and unfortunately there with Morgan's forehand, that wind comes into play a little bit more. The backhand's going to just kind of keep them straight for our players, but the forehand is going to get, the wind's going to get underneath that and it lifted hers over there towards the cart path. And again, she turns that and exposes the underside of that disc and makes it hyzer off to the left. So getting a little bit of wind underneath the disc is going to cause Morgan to get a bogey, unfortunately, here on the 13th. Oh, Oh. Cadence, such bad luck with the baskets today. So we have Jordan tapping in for her par. And the other women on the card losing a stroke. Hole number 14. This is a par for 724 feet. This back nine is definitely showing us some teeth here. 
No doubt about it, this is the most difficult hole on the course, and I'm not sure that it's close. <laughs> <laughs> this hole a real wait. challenge for both the FA1 and MA1 fields here at the Amateur Disc Golf World Championships. Yeah, we had a very soft par five on the front nine, and this one almost double the distance par four. Jordan trying to get a nice, strong first placement shot out to the right. A lot going on here, it looks like, mm -hmm. as well. So it's a side hill lie from the corner all the way up to the basket. The further you get, the better your angle, but the more you are up on a side hill lie. So you really have to decide what it is you want to go for here. And I think I'm seeing some Mando paint on that tree. You are indeed. That's that's what defines the corner here on the 14th. You see so, those three trees there beyond those water tanks. And one of those is marked as the Mando tree. So all of our women are out here to the right in their perfect placement zone. And now their second shot trying to get up to where they can see the basket finally. Jordan just playing to get around the corner there. Yeah, this is definitely a, a two-shot placement hole. Morgan keeps that a little bit low. It's going to get caught up just a tad bit shorter than her card mates. Shrew's got great distance. We'll see if she uses it here to her advantage to get further up the hill so she can hopefully see the basket a little bit easier on her next shot. couple of trees really playing into that as well. So Morgan now, after three good shots, still finds herself about 50 feet short. There's Jordan trying to play up and over the hill from the right to the left. And will also be well short. Yeah, and that cart path right behind the basket, I'm assuming is OB mm -hmm. as well. So very, very difficult green. Yeah, the path they're playing across right there, as you can see, that's not OB, but the one in the foreground when we get the, the vantage point from the basket is OB. Sheru now. Yeah, and she just had that amount of distance ahead of her card mates, so she is able to get up there close for a look at par. I think this is one of those holes you just have to tell yourself it's a five. <laughs> Don't get no. upset. You know, this is a very difficult hole. And as long as you play your shots correctly, you really can't be upset with yourself if you come up a little bit short. Uh, you're exactly right, Jennifer. A bogey on this hole mathematically picked up strokes on the field as about half the field took double bogey or worse. Hole play into a 1.5 stroke over par average. Wow. I think some, the pars on some of these holes definitely could be recalculated. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I'm not going to disagree with you there. There were in particular two holes here at the country club mm -hmm. that I might've tweaked just a little bit in hindsight, but that's the benefit of hindsight. We are to hole number 15, another par three that is, plays 315 feet. This one's a lot of fun playing downhill all the way from tee to basket and sweeping from uh, right to left. You might think, okay, so a mid-range perhaps and a little bit of a stock sort of fading hyzer. The problem is look how close the out of bounds is beyond and left of the basket. These greens have been so challenging, not only with elevation change, but the OB has been so close to the baskets. That looks tight, needs to get to the ground quickly, and it does not. Shuru is out of bounds off the tee here at the 15th. 
So really wanting to play this shot nice and wide and just letting the disc do the work to get back to the left. Jordan lands in bounds initially, but looks like she has skipped along and out. She'll be inside the circle, though, to save par. Cadence playing it just a hair wider. It's going to go past the basket, but stays in bounds. Now Morgan forced to go to the backhand here. Oh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Man down. That we've is got, something you don't see too often. <laughs> we've got camera parts. We've got people oh. flying into the pond. Oh, Sharu focuses and almost makes that par save. Uh, yep, she'll be wow. in for bogey. <laughs> now Morgan quickly playing. I don't blame her. Yeah. Someone might be out Checking to get her after Checking on the that. camera guy <laughs> after <laughs> she makes that putt. Cadence Ooh, with a strong bid. Unfortunately, yeah, she, didn't catch any metal at all and nearly goes out of bounds beyond the basket. Yeah, luckily to stay in on that one. Jordan takes her meter in and is able to save par. Yeah, what circle a three hole. there. <laughs> wow, yeah, no doubt about it. This I, I, Way more action than I anticipated. <laughs> uh -huh, and it proved to be that way every single time I saw any of our competitors from I, any of the fields play this 15th here at the Country Club. I could imagine falling into those ponds. They are so disgusting. <laughs> uh, yeah, hopefully, they are. Hopefully nothing went into the water there, including the camera. Let me just put it this way. I heard a lot of animal noises from those ponds and a I'm not sure I'm not sure what <laughs> all of those animals were. I know what a few of them were. I wanted the replay on this hole to be the cameraman going down, but instead we have the putt. Let's but let our just... production. Hey, production guys. <laughs> for next time, hey. Yeah, hole number 16, we have yet another par 3 that is 376 feet. With again, but... quite a bit of elevation change on this hole. And a lot of out of bounds. This one of the few holes here on the course that utilizes an out of bounds line that mirrors the fairway, meaning the ball golf fairway. So everything to the left here is OB and everything to the right of that cart path is OB. Yeah, you could see that softly painted white line there mm -hmm. along the short grass. Jordan gets a nice hyzer, plays it out there um, to land in the middle. Good, I can already tell shot. you, yeah, I can already tell you a par in this hole is going to be good. Cadence playing the hyzer perfectly as well to get a little bit more distance. Shrew's been showing her distance all day. She puts a little maybe too much turn on that one, but that's going to be just fine. I can't really tell which way the wind's blowing, but I would assume that's why she kind of changed up from that big hyzer she had been throwing. Mm -hmm. As I mentioned before, it really swirled during the course of the day and going over these undulating grounds. It was difficult at times to tell exactly what was going on with the wind. Look at the incline on that approach shot and Cadence is able to hit it perfectly. Beautifully done. A par most definitely picking up strokes on the field today. Yeah, we've seen some ugly action around the basket. So these women Ooh. trying to get them as close as possible. Morgan's disc hits the ground a little too quick. So she's going to have a little bit left to try to save par. But she hits wow. it. Wow. <laughs> what a great Ooh. shot there. Awesome. That was circle's edge or so. Yeah, that looked outside the circle. That was a great par save. And her sister, unfortunately, getting the bounce out that we have seen a few times today. Cadence taking her time because she's had that happen to her a few times throughout the round. And Sheru is going to tap in her par on an awesome upshot.
Jordan taps in for the bogey, and I'm just struck by the amount of up and down movement just amongst these four players during the course of this round today. Yeah, and you, you see that a lot with par fours and fives. You too can join the Ace Run Pro Patreon account for just $3 a month. They bring us so much footage throughout the year. Make sure to like, subscribe, follow, and join them with their Patreon and keep them out on the course. We're at a hole 17, par three, a little bit shorter, 326 feet. Players are gonna tee off from over there on the right. And then they're gonna play right along the edge of this golf fairway to a basket that is perched on a very, very steep downslope. Jennifer, I can tell you that during the course of the week, more than a few times I saw a shot turn on edge and roll as far as that cart path in the distance, leaving a 200 foot shot back to the basket. Wow. Cadence has good height on her hyzer. Gets a much bigger skip than they've been getting throughout the round there on that shorter, drier grass. Which is in bounds here on the 17th. It wasn't on the 16th. And that's something this. that happens. Oh, stay, stay, stay. There's that roll I was talking about. Wow. Curls up, though. So that's something that you will notice sometimes on ball golf courses as the day and the heat progresses with the sun, your skips will get bigger because the grass dries up. They water golf courses so much more. So a little more humid, a little soggier, less skips in the morning. And then in the afternoon heat, you'll get a little bit bigger skips. And we have maybe a Oh, what a Stay. roll there. Much better roll. I hated to jinx it. I was going to say a much better roll, and I was like, we have to wait till it stops. <laughs> <laughs> Cadence with a good approach. Now, and Sharu. Oh, and bid. that stays. Yes, that was a good stay by the basket. So across and on that cart path to the right was safe on this hole. So this for birdie. Beautiful drive by Jordan. And a rare birdie, one of only five women to birdie the 17th on the day. This whole playing about a half stroke over par. This is what these baskets have been like. Don't look down until you see it resting in the basket. They come with scary have putts. Today. Yeah. And Sheru is going to tap in her par as well. And we are finally to the last hole of round three. has played a very difficult long back nine and it's about to get longer hole 18 we have a par four 577 feet this hole playing often directly into the dominant wind and playing from up on top and then over a very steep sort of a gully here to a plateaued area where now the basket finds itself tucked very near some out of bounds sand traps with the pond obviously out of bounds beyond. Yeah, the greens have definitely been playing very challenging, making these players commit all around. Good placement shot. You see our card in front there trying to finish out the hole. It's safe to tee as long as you know that you're not going to reach that card in front of you when you have par fours and fives. And we do that for speed of play. Cadence gets 
probably a good roll. Gives her a little bit extra on that drive. I found that in both the MP1 and FA1, or excuse Huge me, MA1. Drive. <laughs> MA1 and FA1, here on the 18th, the goal was not to take yourself out of it with the drive. Yeah, and the height on Sheru's drive was nice and flat and low. So where when she reached that gully, it just carried it all the way across. And then she even got a little skip on the hard grass there. So smashing drive for Sheru. Excellent second there from Jordan. Now Morgan hoping to do the same. That looks a little high. Yeah. Released oh. it a little oh. early. The Maybe way that safe? skip though, it yeah. could be safe. It's before the pond and it got off of the concrete. Now cadence. We need that to hurry and skip left. It doesn't. It goes into the uh, landscaping there. Now Shiru. Yeah, she didn't have much left on that. Mm -hmm. So hopefully she is able to tap that birdie in. And it appears that Morgan is safe in between the sidewalk and pond there. Hopefully. Ooh, Cadence and that's also playing. Safe. Yeah, it's I like that. A lot of times landscaping areas, golf courses will uh, make out of bounds. So Cadence lucky there that this one allowing her to play from that area. Great. And with the birdie, birdie Jordan, big time. That's how you really want to finish on the 18th, hitting a good, solid birdie putt. Shrew gets her birdie as well. Played that hole perfectly. Her distance has really helped her throughout this course. Six down on the front for Sheru and one over on the back is going to have her a good solid five down for the round. Yeah, just one off the hot round of the day here at the Princeton Country Club. Let's give Chantel Colander a little shout out for shooting the hot round here in round three of the 2022 PDGA Amateur Disc Golf World Championships. So a little bit of movement on our leaderboard. Sheru is going to jump into first place by one stroke over Jordan and Morgan. And then Hannah Lingle is in our fourth spot, tied with just a couple others. A lot more action still to come here at the Amateur Disc Golf World Championships with two more rounds to go. First, the fourth round, and then a final round after a cut. So keep it tuned right here to the PDGA on YouTube for continuing coverage. Thanks for joining us.